Hi everyone. So as you might have seen last Monday, I made a video about attachment styles and just going over very briefly the different types of attachment styles and words that could be associated with that attachment style. And I wanted to really try today to dive in a little bit deeper. So with that, again, as I mentioned in the first video, there's four different attachment styles, secure, avoidant, anxious, and disorganized. So adults with these different attachment styles can present in a number of different ways and oftentimes can be, have a really significant impact on the way that they relate to others. They may perceive and deal with closeness and emotional intimacy in a way that may look unhealthy or disorganized. They may find themselves struggling to communicate their emotions and needs, listen and understand to the emotional needs of others. They may respond to conflict differently and they may have different expectations of their partners and the relationship as a whole. So again, doing a deeper dive today. So a secure attachment looks a lot like low avoidance, low anxiety. They're comfortable with intimacy. They're not worried about rejection or feeling preoccupied with the relationship. They can basically live their life as a collaborative, independent partner. Okay. So they can work as a team. They can communicate fairly effectively. Um, and as well as they can be individuals in the relationship. I don't feel like they have to like mold into the other person. They don't feel like they have to constantly dig and dig and dig for that relationship to feel comfortable. It's just, they just already have a sense of comfortability. Um, they may say things like, it's easy for me to get close to others and I'm comfortable with depending on them and having them depend on me. I don't worry about being abandoned or someone getting too close to me. They also understand that relationships have a beginning, middle, and end. They're not afraid of either of those stages of a relationship, and they can tolerate distress in the relationship by going back to their internal message of, I am safe, I am good enough. So avoiding attachment high, high avoidance, low level of anxiety. Okay, so they're uncomfortable with closeness and primarily value independence and freedom. They're not worried about their partner's availability. I, they might say something like, I'm comfortable being close to others. I do find it difficult to trust and depend on others and prefer that others do not depend on me. It is important that I feel independent and self-sufficient my partner wants me to be more intimate. That is something that I can be more comfortable with. So again, avoidant, high avoidance, low anxiety. I think sometimes this could be easily masked as a secure attachment because the person really seems solid and unfazed by conflict like in the relationship, but that's mainly because they're avoiding it, right? They like just kind of live in their own independent vacuum and whether their partner is hurt or whether their part partner or whether their partner needs them, they may dismiss that or avoid those calls for help. Um, they may, again, find themselves as a really high achieving career person um, or a really high achieving person because they have very low desire to be involved in other people's stuff. So they're really self-focused. Okay, so the next type is anxious, low avoidance, high anxiety. So this is the opposite of avoidant. They crave closeness and intimacy. Um, they're very insecure about the relationships. You may find them say things like, I want to be extremely emotionally close and merge 
with others, but others are reluctant to get as close as I would like. I often worry that my part partner doesn't love me or value me and will abandon me. Their desire for closeness oftentimes can scare people away. Okay, so oftentimes anxious people also fantasize what a good relationship or a great relationship looks like. They see it as they need to spend enormous amounts of time together in order to be close. They need to do things for their partner in order for their partner to love them. Um, they act more out of their fear of abandonment than they do out of love or secure attachment. And then the final type is a mixture of anxious and avoidant. So high in avoidance, high on anxiety. They're uncomfortable with it, intimacy and they're worried about their partner's commitment and love. They may say something like, I am uncomfortable getting close to others and find it difficult to trust and depend on them. I worry I will get hurt if I get close to my partner. So again, going back, mixture of both avoidant and anxious. They push away and want to bring close. They could push away and again, want to bring close. And so it creates this like roller coaster type of relationship um, depending on what mood they're in. And then of course, it, whatever mood their partner is in. So these four different types of attachment styles have behavioral, cognitive, and social aspects to each of them. And the way that they differ regarding closeness, dependency, avoidance, and anxiety really helps identify which type of style each person has. And it's common for some adults to have a combination of these traits and may just not fit one style, depending on what type of relationship they're in or what type of stage of life that they're in. Um, what the goal is of learning about these attachment styles is really trying to move towards secure attachment. In secure attachment, you find yourself more autonomous, you are comfortable with being in a loving and emotional relationship. You can depend on your partner and allow them to depend on you. Um, and it really allows someone to feel the most comfortable and safe. Safety is a huge thing in relationships, which I think oftentimes gets overlooked. Um, oftentimes people say that they are in relationships because they deeply love the other person, which obviously is valuable, but safety needs to be established in a relationship before love can truly, truly exist. Because like fear is the opposite of love, right? Hate's not the opposite of love. Fear is the opposite of love. So if you have fear of abandonment, fear of emotional safety, you can't really have that deep sense of love that intimate relationships need in order to survive. So again, safety, top priority in all relationships. So if you're in a relationship now, or if you're single, or if you even feel a sense of unsafety in your friendships or your relationships with your family, that really needs to be established. And I'll go over what it looks like to try to gain safety in relationships throughout this series, but I just wanted to really highlight that at this moment. Um, and to kind of conclude for today, I really want to acknowledge that people are at different stages of their healing. Whether they've had trauma in previous relationships or they've had no trauma at all, like each of us needs to learn in a lot of ways how to be in relationships. And sometimes that's not something that we're taught as children. And so learning to communicate our emotions is really important. Learning to tolerate uncomfortable emotions is really important. And again, that'll all be covered in this series, but I just wanted to kind of acknowledge that and try not to like shame yourself or try not to be upset if you're not in a secure relationship or you don't feel like you're in a secure relationship. All right, thank you all for tuning in and I will catch you next week.